with it being 8.30 and us having a quorum, we'll go ahead and try this meeting of the Pension and Visitors Bureau uh, board uh, to order. So, um, first and foremost, I'd like to meet, uh, introduce two of our new board members, uh, Ms. Alec, Alex Ronk. Ronk. Rants. Sorry. It's okay. I try, I actually I tried ready. to look it up and did the whole pronounce thing and I got it wrong. So excellent. I just texted him. And, <laughs> and Mr. Larry King. So good. We're off to a great start. So um, I'm John McLaren. I am the um, current chairman of the board of uh, Nacogdoche CVB and uh, the general manager of the Fredonia Hotel. And um, when we go around, I don't know if everybody's introduced everybody, so if you yeah. want. Oh, you well, I'm Wanda McCon, uh, owner of Necker Valley Vineyard, and um, I've, I've met a couple of times, but I know Larry from a okay. hundred years ago. So. <laughs> so those, um, um, have y'all introduced your, yourselves to, is everybody else, I'm sorry, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm off to a wonderful start this morning. Um, we have, uh, welcome new board members, this is, this is how this goes. So um, I'd like to introduce a couple of uh, um, uh, folks. Uh, um, um, Councilman uh, uh, Bolden is online with us. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, Ms. Jessica Sal with, uh, with Main Street in the city. Um, Mr. Uh, Brian Bray is with us and uh, Mario Canizares, our city manager who we'll be hearing from in just a little while. So um, welcome all visitors and our new board members. We're going to do great things for this uh, for this city and community. So, um, with that being done, I'd like uh, to entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the July meeting. I'll make a motion. Motion, motion and a second. Second. Seconded. All in favor of approving the meetings from July meeting, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Did you undervote uh, any of that committee board members? Was it your intention to also establish a committee? I apologize. I apologize. With the um, with the addition of our new board members and the um, uh, positions that they they replace, it's uh, necessary that I form a committee um, to uh, appoint new officers for the board. So um, I I would like to appoint to that committee um, Wanda. If you would, if you'd like to join on the committee, I would, I would appreciate uh, your input there. And um, Shay, um, if you would like to join us on that committee, that would be, that would be great. So, um, um, what we'll do is we'll, we'll meet uh, sometimes next month and talk about the, the positions of officers for this, for this board, and, um, and come to the next meeting with some um, recommendations to put before the board. Apologize for that. Thank you very much, Ms. Morgan. Um, with that, we will go and move on to uh, financials. Ms. Bartlett, how are you? I'm good. All right. Um, I'm just going to jump in here and let's Next one of those. Have, right. uh, yes, ma'am. Um, I'm just going to make a couple of statements and then just open it for questions if you have any. If you look at the last column, we are 83% of the way through our budget, and we have exceeded that greatly in income. It's a good thing. Um, we are over on thrift sales and merchandise sales. Hot tax is what really has increased more than we anticipated in the budget, and so we are doing really good there. Um, the servicing and events income is something new, and if you'll notice, it says not budgeted. This is the movie nights, the concerts, the new stuff we did this year that we didn't really know was coming um, so much, and it was just kind of, we just threw it out there to do things while we couldn't do other things. And so the servicing events income up there also has an expense category down under visitor services. So that net is a little low, but join us right now. Um, the repairs and improvements under the expenses are high. This is due to a very large inventory replacement in July in our building. And I want to let you know. 
pay for it because you know, let in repairs and cleanup and all of that. So next month that will show up in that category. So what it is now, we have not paid for that. Um, we have not had good savings to pay for that. We're, we're good right now because the hot tax is high and the hot tax is only through May and all projections show that in July and August it will be even better than the spring. So if that holds true, you should be good through the end of the year. Uh, any questions for anybody? Okay. Just a note on that July's um, star is, is attached as it did, it did come in. And it's, it, it, as Miss Bartlett said, it is very positive. So we are trending in the correct, position, in the correct way. Any questions on the financials? Okay, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve as presented by Miss Bartlett. I move to approve the budget financials. Okay. Um, I second. Second. Having a motion and a second. All in favor of approving, as stated, the budget and financials. Signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We pass that and. Just for our new board members, the financials have been pr presented to city council and, and everything. We're for the budget. Right? I'm sorry. Budget. budget. What did I say? Financials. Sorry. Hitting on all cylinders today. All right. Um, thank you very much, Ms. Bartlett. Any, any comments there? No? Good. All right. And with that, we will move to our distinguished guest. Uh, I apologize. Golly. Um, let's do that. Ms. Bartlett. The budget was actually given out to the board members last month. Um, they tabled it because two of them were going to be off and going to see new people and it was the first that they looked at it. Um, Pam Herbo from the city gave us the projected amount for our hot tax. It's a shot in the dark. We did that last year because we don't know how and when things will come back, but we're just doing the best we can. Um, obviously, it is much better than last year's projections, and so the city withdrew the agreement to reimburse the administrative fee for the things we'd like to cover at this current year. Um, I believe this has already been submitted to the city um, council. It's not a thing yet, and it will be incorporated in the city's budget. Okay, attached is the uh, proposed budget for the next year, and it is, it's uh, a little bit healthier than, than um, it's been the last couple of years, which is very encouraging. And, um, and as we said, it, 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 has, it uh, has been presented um, and approved. Accepted by City Council, I believe already. So, and we have um, we included it in the last motion, correct? Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Well, let's do that. All right. So, um, are there any questions on the budget that, that we have proposed before us? No. Okay. Well, then, with that, let's uh, entertain a motion to approve the. Um, proposed 21-22 budget for the CBB. <coughs> Move that we uh, approve the proposed budget for 21-22. All right. Second. Second. <coughs> Moved and second. All in favor of approving the budget, signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Raise your hand. hand. I'm sorry? Was it Alex the one that had Alex? Alex. We both said it, yeah. It's okay. Rock, paper, scissors. Rock. Yeah. <laughs> Now, without further ado, our distinguished, honored guest. I'm going to have to come to the podium to carry this off, but that's all right. Absolutely. Good sorry. morning, uh, board members and council member Bolden on the call. Um, I think he wanted to see what I'm doing. 
to check up on me. So here he goes. I hear a laugh in there. So, I like watch greatness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, no questions, please. No. Um, good morning, everybody, uh, folks here in the room and on, online. Um, just wanted to give you all just a, a concept of what we're wanting to do. Uh, I've been here right at a year, a little over a year uh, this month. And um, just, you know, obviously when I inherited the position, when I received the position of city manager, one of the first things that I heard was, can you please work with our, our staff over at the Convention Visitors Bureau because everybody knows sales tax, or excuse me, uh, uh, hotel motel uh, revenues are, are, are tanking. We're in the middle of a pandemic. No one's traveling. Business, leisure, I mean, it's all stopped down. And so, um, so was able, literally the first week on the job, reached out to Sherry. Uh, uh, Morgan to introduce myself and to ha how can we roll up our sleeves to work through this because we're in we're in the middle of a budget we got to obviously present a budget we've got to get move, move forward uh, I thought we put a put a pretty good plan together um, to provide a, a three-year phase in of a subsidy because we knew that so the product sales tax property tax that we we knew that the hotel tax was was in a bad shape the hotel industry was obviously shut down as Mr. McLaren knows. So we put a plan together with the subsidy and so that each year as things hopefully improved, we also reduce the subsidy. To our dismay, and it's a great thing, uh, the hotel industry rebounded a lot, at least locally, a lot faster than we had anticipated. Uh, we were thinking it would be 2024 before we would see 2023, 2024 before we see back to 2019 levels. Uh, we did that in a year. Um, and so, as Ms. Bartlett was mentioning, you know, we are in a really good position. Our local economy is rebounded. Uh, I can't say how long it's going to stay that way, but I think we're in good shape. Uh, all indicators are up, so we're really excited about that. So as a result, as you see, as Ms. Bartlett reported, we're not looking at providing any subsidy because there's no need for a subsidy moving forward. Now, if we have to do that again, we'll revisit and then, you know, we'll, we'll obviously reconvene. Because, again, I, I look at the CVB as an extension of our staff. Uh, I know that they're separate entities, but they occupy a city building. Uh, there are city employees. Uh, that was done a few years ago when they were brought into the city's payroll. And that was done for a number of reasons. A, to recruit people as there were vacancies because of the city benefits and salaries. And so I, I truly do see that as an extension of staff. And that's a benefit to us, and I hope it's a benefit to, to, to the Convention and Visitors Bureau. So as I observed the last 12 months as city manager and we're going through the budget process, one of the things that just keeps coming to mind is why isn't the CVB a city department? Uh, there are city employees, uh, you know, typically 80% of any budget is typically your people, is your personnel cost. The remainder is operational contracts, uh, maintenance, those things that, you know, that keep upkeep and operation. And so I just kept asking the question, why aren't they city operations? Uh, or excuse me, city departments. And, you know, a variety of answers. It's been tradition. We've always done it that way. Uh, you know, we would like to, but we just weren't ready to tackle that because right, we were about to be ready to do it. The pandemic hit, and so we had no city manager. He retired, and we were within an interim situation. So it's just the timing just wasn't right. And so, so I've had conversations with Sherry about conceptually, um, you know, can we begin the transition of making this the CVB a city department again? I think the benefits in my mind are clear because the way my understanding of the way things operate now is is CVB staff, you know, yes, you're 501, is it a C4? C6. C6, uh, but you have to maintain uh, a separate auditor. You have to maintain costs for a separate IT. You may have uh, communication on landlines, internet access that you pay separately. Uh, you may have to pay separately for legal assistance when needed. Um, you know, there are a lot of things that you carry as overhead that if you were a city department, you wouldn't have. You would be basically just like if you were human resources, a finance department, city manager's office. You just have that. And so just running the analysis with our finance director, Pam Kerbo, uh, it's not a ton of money, but there's approximately $15,000 worth of savings that you all and they all would not have to incur if they were part of city departments. So, uh, and, you know, I want, I, want to, I want to move things and go quick. And so my initial thought was, you know, could we execute this and potentially bring them into the city fold? I'm going to close this door if you don't mind. Um, uh, 
uh, conceptually to see if we could bring them into the operations October 1st. October 1st uh, is our fiscal year of this year, October 21st, 21. Uh, that may seem a little ambitious because there are some things uh, contractually that, that you all have that we need to make sure we run through. I definitely want to work with Ms. Bartlett along with our finance director to make sure that, that we're not affecting the operations in any way in a negative way. That's never the intention. Uh, it truly is just bring them part of a city, city department because I, I just, again, as I said, they are an extension of city staff. Mm -hmm. um, so really what I'd like to do is just, uh, I guess, bring the issue to the board about let's, if we could, over this next fiscal year or the next several months, can we work towards bringing the operations into, into the city department as a city department? We would probably need to go through our city attorney's office, look at the charter, look at any, any ordinances that may need to be updated or amended. Uh, certainly work with Ms. Bartlett and, 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 and uh, the other CMB staff to, to make sure that, that you know, we're good on any contracts. Um, it just, it's just, it, it's very, it just seems very wonky right now because they're city staff, so they fall under city personnel policies, but what about city procurement policies? You know, how do, how, do they, how do they operate and, and then these additional contracts? And again, they're not a big operation, so you're not getting the economies of scale you could get when you're, when you're paired into a $60 million budget and you're a $500,000 budget. So it's just a sheer realities of economies of scale. Uh, and again, ultimately, they are an extension of staff. Um, uh, we work together closely, and so would like to continue doing so. So uh, I'm sure there's history there. I don't know it, uh, uh, and certainly would be happy to to learn more about the history of, of why it was separated and all those things, you know, offline. But but I truly do think that uh, I don't see any detriment to this, quite honestly, as bringing them as part of the city operation. The secondly, the other thing, too, is one of part of Sherry's presentations that she made with council along with the other department heads, they, they all uh, presented their operational budgets and they talked about their accomplishments and their goals for this next com upcoming year. So one of the things that, that, that Sherry mentioned in her presentation to council was some of the focus, the, some of the focus areas that they're going to be doing in this next budget year. One of those, uh, and, and they've been very, we've been very successful with special events, and I attribute that to the leadership of Sherry and her team uh, to execute these programs. Um, but they want to focus more on cultural events. Uh, they'd like to, I think, I think reinstate the Nine Flags Festival. Is that a Christmas event? Uh, and then they also want to work on doing more with uh, sports tourism. So looking at. Um, bringing in uh, tournaments and, and teams, work with, with whether you're working with SFA when they're doing camps for the kids, and while they may stay on campus uh, in the in the dorms, their parents may can't stay on campus, so they could stay at our local hotels. We can also work with our parks department, recreation folks to host tournaments and things of that nature. So they're going to be working very closely. They already do work very closely with with. Um, our parks and recreation operations, and so so it's sort of it's a twofold. A at some point in the near future, uh, through the proper analysis and the vetting, to bring them as part of a city department, and then secondly, one of the things I'm also proposing is doing a, a reorganization of a number of city departments, uh, and part of that is is to work with the with Sherry and her team to uh, uh, have them report with uh, work directly with uh, community services, which is parks, recreation, libraries. Because again, those operations are tied. You know, you know, the city owns a number of park facilities, Festival Park, um, the labor, the putting up of, of signs and barricades and moving of porta potties, and just the just the sheer execution of the uh, of the you know the the just the operations of these events are done by city staff, and and CBB staff helps coordinate it. But at the end of the day, it's really the city staff that's been doing that. And so I think just putting them aligned in a department just makes a lot more sense. And so anyway, I just don't want to belabor the point. Just wanted to bring those two concepts to the board uh, and also to the, to the folks online and, and anybody else watching. But uh, uh, again, don't need a hard decision today. Just want to make sure you all knew where I was, where my head was, and kind of get your, your feedback and your thoughts on what I'm, what I'm, what I'm thinking. Thank you. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions at the moment for, for Mario? I'm sure there will be lots of questions in, uh, uh, moving forward as we get through this and, yeah. and start to really dive into it and look what, look and see what it would look like yeah. in the future. But we'll, uh, we'll, we'll take that 
one step at a time. But but overall, uh, at least for the time being, you're, you're okay as a board to at least continue that towards that vein. But again, no decisions to be made. Just kind of looking at just a head nod right. or a yeah. head shake. We'll lay 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 the cards out on the table, as they say, and we'll we'll, we'll see what uh, works best for the community and um, for for what we do. Great, that's what we're here for. Right? Well, I appreciate it. Thank you all. all right. Have a great. Thank day. you, sir. Thank you. you. Move now to staff reports. Um, Sherry, we'll start yourself. Uh, next week on Tuesday, Joanna and Ashley and myself will be traveling to Conroe for the 2021 Texas Association of Convention and Visitors Bureau. Um, annual conference at Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville. One of the many sacrifices that we make for the betterment of our community. Um, we're looking forward to that, I think, as each of us knows in our own respective industries, our greatest commodities are often our peers that are doing, uh, serving similar function in their own communities. So that's always a great educational um, time for us where we can share what we're doing, we can hear and listen in in our shirt sleeve sessions on how other communities are responding and dealing with similar issues, um, you know, that all destinations are, um, are dealing with currently. This will be Ashley's first professional uh, conference to attend physically, so I'm excited for her to begin. Um, in her career in tourism with the establishment of some network connections as well. So we will be gone uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, Mike will be at home, minding the store. Um, I have instructed him or advised him to what I always say to Mike, you do whatever it is that you would like. Um, <laughs> just please <clears throat> don't leave me. Um, but he's going to call some volunteers to see if he can get some support. But if for some reason we're unable to find um, some volunteers to help cover his lunch, um, the CVB might be closed for an hour at midday so that Mr. Bay can uh, take a break and, and have lunch. But other than that, it should usually that is not a trouble for us. We are blessed by our volunteer staff. So um, that's happening next week. We're really excited about that. We did, Ashley, did we um, submit four or five? We submitted five of our ideas. That's what's called the Idea Fair. Um, and all the destinations we compete against other um, cities that are within our same budgetary group. So um, that's always fun to see and it's always an honor because it is peer selected the winners are so it's one of those uh, you know when you win an award from uh, from your peers it kind of almost means more than if it were a you know random committee or something so um, we're excited about that and on Monday this past Monday week uh, past we hosted at the bequest of uh, Mr. Canizaris and Mayor Mize, a tourism summit with some of our community leaders as well as our counterparts across the river uh, in Lufkin. And we met at the Fredonia Hotel and had lunch together and then spent a couple of hours afterwards sort of lining out what our individual assets were, what we have to bring to the table, just sort of meeting the players and talking about some tangible ways that we can work together to promote Lufkin Nacogdoches as a region to travelers because that, you know, the disparity between one Angelina and Nacogdoches counties, that is something that is really held primarily by residents. When visitors come through our area, they don't, they don't know. Um, you know, they see us all as a beautiful Piney Woods destination. So. Um, it makes sense. We were able to have, I think, some really good conversations. I know um, Brian Bray was able to, you know, get a little bit closer. He had tried to, know, with no success, to reach out um, individually with his counterpart um, in Lufkin, and uh, his counterpart was not in attendance at the summit, but, um, you know, he was able to 
have another touchstone moment to say, hey, this is what we want to do. We want to uh, do an inventory of what we have so that when we come ac run across bids for softball tournaments or baseball tournaments or soccer or whatever it is, that we can now combine uh, because we are just 20 minutes, you know, 25 and bad traffic or 30. But um, it now all of a sudden where we do not, we have not had time to uh, let our infrastructure catch up with the landscape of what it takes uh, just physically with your assets to have to host a tournament. Now all of a sudden we have a partner and so we can uh, now position ourselves uh, to a greater market than we've qualified for before while we hopefully um, work towards that park master plan which would allow for larger fields and amenities and the things that the selection committees look for individually. So, um, and we're working on some regional itineraries. That's going to be the um, sort of the right off the gate, the low hanging fruit as we like to call it of, of starting this new relationship between Lufkin and Nacogdoches and marketing as such. Um, and then we had plans for three years down the line and five years down the line as well. So I'm going to be typing up those notes and formalizing the contact list um, and getting that out. They've had some staff changes even since last Monday in their CVB. Um, so we're, you know, having to deal with a couple of hurdles that are just slowing down the process. But um, that's the intention. There is, I think Mayor Mize um, and Mario have had a couple of different meetings with their counterparts in Lufkin. Um, you know, to address issues such as, you know, gang violence and just some sort of some civil unrest that is just a very low undercurrent and to get ahead of that um, and just a new season of um, an improved relationship between the two communities. So we were excited to be able to be a part of that um, and look forward to the gains from that as well because when one of us shines, we all sparkle. And that's it. I'll turn it over to Jillian. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. New faces. Uh, I want to start off by uh, saying if you would like to see a old school calendar of events, which we currently don't have on our website, we do have an internal promotions calendar. And I mention that because on that calendar has not only the events that are public to the community, they do have some of the groups that are coming, so you can still see who's coming in as far as straight up tourism 100%. It does include, uh, with having the privilege of, of doing permits now, um, it allows us as an entity to further populate that calendar and look really good. Every event does start out as a as a local event. However, there's many of them that are the general public is invited to. So as our spokespeople, you can also extend that invitation. So if you want to send an email to me, I'll just include you in that. Again, it's just hopefully we had interns a little earlier, so it was easy. When you click on that, um, what the event is, we will have actually the description in there of what it is. Uh, it's not always because sometimes it takes a little bit to, to catch up, but it's also nice to have more eyes on it. So as a reminder and then also just a question what the event is. So today I'm going to talk specifically about an event that's coming up because I need your help. And that is the Cannonball Motorcycle event. It is coming in September. Right now uh, between today and the September 23rd date, we probably have about eight events that are on the calendar that you can take a look at. But this Cannonball Motorcycle, I think, is a really wonderful opportunity to sh uh, highlight and shine on Nacogdoches. Uh, it is a, not international, but a national uh, event. This is going to be their sixth year. Every two years, it's a endurance ride across the country. And the focus this year is Harley-Davidson bikes built between the years 1910 and 1930. So there's actually 110 riders that will be on these old school bikes going from Michigan all the way to South Padre. 
and they have selected Nacogdoches as an overnight stay. So with that, 110 riders, we have 120 team members. We also have 20 staff personnel, giving us a total of 250 folks from the ride, part of the motorcycle cannonball. The group has requested that we have six greeters stationed at our square. Isn't that coincidental we have six um, members on our <laughs> board? <laughs> so this might be a really good uh, way to participate. The bikes will enter off of Main Street. They come in off the loop off 21. Uh, they're going to come to Fredonia Street, take a, le take a right. They're going to circle around the square and ask to back into the parking spots on Pecan Street. So we're going to take them to the furthest point, fill them in. We'd like to have greeters stationed. So once they do back in, which we will help with as well, we may have more than six. We're just looking for spokespeople to welcome them to our community, hand them a map. And the idea behind the map is that they will be able to leave their bike if there's spectators there, speak to their bikes, and then also travel down our main street to visit all of our shops, our eateries, and ultimately the big setup will be in front of the brewery. And the reason for that is we want to take advantage of what's already happening on a Thursday, which is um, Trivia. trivia, there's the word. Mm -hmm. And um, also we have music at the cottage uh, and this invitation to have everybody play with us, which we have already brought up with the Main Street merchants. We're just going to do that again with Jessica's help. She's very good at convincing them uh, to do about anything. They will be arriving at 3 o'clock and be parked down there until 6.30 max. Our Harley-Davidson uh, store will be down in the square as well with two service tents so you can imagine these bikes uh, they break down quite a bit mm -hmm. so uh, they will be uh, there as well uh, what we're encouraging them is between that three and four o'clock period to stick around into in the square but they're gonna start serving dinner or they want to the team wants to start eating at 430 and they have to leave out at 630 now here's the catch it does start, you know, they are able to play maybe a little bit of trivia, but this kind of event in a community, this is one of the prior numbers we received, of a population of 3,000 brought in 5,000 spectators. So to give you an idea of how this is done so far for us, Ashley posted for the first time on Tuesday about the event. We had 73, uh, today we have 7,300 people that has reached with 616 engagements. There's been 68 shares of this event, and this is three times higher than any of our posts in this past week. So we have lots of enthusiasts about this, and as we build upon it, it will only get greater. So if you're interested in learning more about the group itself, it is put together by the, some folks that originated from Sturgis. And they just, again, it's like the old, you know, T4, 4T, whatever the models are. Um, it is a group of folks that have a lot of money. I look at this as this is the ultimate toy. And uh, with that, we hope they're bringing people that are also here to spend money. So we'd like for the festivities to continue till about 8. I am requesting from the city that they close down Main Street, not Main Street, Mound Street, the different play area to see if it works between uh, Maine and the hospital. I'm going to be asking uh, the city manager if he will extend the beer garden just basically across the street to where their entrance and their exit is, where the food truck is. We're going to have two additional food trucks there. I've already been in communication with the company across the street that lives in that house to see how we can, you know, utilize that space and we're gonna to continue to build that event, not only to our motorcycle folks, but to the folks that are coming in, we hope, for a long weekend, because that is the kickoff to Parents' Day weekend. So we will be cross-promoting with Richard Massey and the marketing team at SFA to have folks come in for trivia slash, holy cow, these beautiful bikes. <laughs> and um, 
we just hope you will be a part of that and consider being one of our hosts and have fun on that evening. So you said mm -hmm. they're going to eat at 4.30? They're going to begin eating at 4.30. And then they leave out? They have to leave out at 6.30. Where, where are they going? They're staying. All the participants are staying on the south side. Okay, so they're they're leaving the square. They to have to leave the square. Okay, right. A lot of that has to do with lighting because these are old bikes. It's not like they have even headlights that are worthy. Um, mm -hmm. And so there's a coordinated, uh, you know, exit. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not required, but they are asked to be back at 6.30. We're going to house a lot of the – the reason they're on the south side is because the course coordinator, he's, you know, sure. it's the leader of the pack. Sure. And uh, we're leaving the Fredonia clear for the spectators. We want the groupies to stay downtown. <laughs> Hence the reason for staying through trivia. Right. right. Uh, we've got music at um, the cottage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we are just looking to have everybody play and participate. We've got an extra uh, couple food trucks because we want to highlight Tex-Mex and Texas Barbecue. All right. So Chambers will be there. We've got poke them in the eye, and um, Casa del Valle. Hey, Joanna. Yes. Um, anecdotally, this cannonball group, it initially came to us pre-pandemic. Um, I believe leadership was um, something in Texarkana, right? Yes. Um, like the, was it the city manager or the mayor? mayor. The mayor of Texarkana uh, reached out to then city manager Jeffers, wanting us to be a stop. And um, I just, I think it's important to note that this is an example of an event that was postponed that we have been able to recapture and bring back. Right. And it also was presented to the Harley Davidson team here and uh, they stumbled a bit and fell. We're not able to financially, um, usually the meals paid for, for the teams. Mm -hmm. And that had been, um, promised by the Harley Davidson and then that kind of fell apart. So uh, we were able to recapture it by our charm and love and come, here's a set price, here's your menus, you, you can't resist it, it's worth the money and we're going to have a good time too. So uh, we're excited to have them and we're, we're the 13th stop of 16. Wow. It's, it's over two weeks. The date on that again is the 23rd? 23rd of September. <clears throat> okay, yeah. So I think Parents Weekend is the weekend before. I thought that. Yeah. You told me that. <laughs> well, actually, it was going to lead into um, some other events that we have, um, but we'll see how that rolls. <clears throat> Just so you know, we, I scheduled the uh, musical theme to be classic rock for trivia for that reason. So <laughs> yes. I figured that would work. Well, we appreciate your efforts because okay. we've worked great with the, the brewery to align things that make sense and keep, get people here early to stay late as well. Uh, other than that, we had a very successful concert. Again, the struggle is real when it comes to volunteers. Um, we had zero. And um, I mean, we do have Daniel. I don't want to dismiss Daniel. Daniel's mm -hmm. son. Her husband, uh, but we have a lot of women, most of them my age, and because I call out my friends and anybody else that will come and assist, and uh, it just, it's physical, so we would appreciate any assistance in that arena, uh, the beginning, at the end, you know, this one that's coming up in October is going to be on a Friday, um, it will be the same day as our next snack again. It will always be if we continue with concerts in the park. Um, there's some financial considerations we have to look for. This is something that CVB is going to continue as we evolve into the possibility of, you know, doing more special events. Uh, and that's just the cost. And I am not afraid to ask for money. I am very good at it. I can do sponsorships. We just have to determine what those costs are. Um, and the um, and that's pretty much it moving forward. We do have 100 rooms booked on the south side for this event for one night. So at least it'll be good for that Thursday. I knew I got my parents' day mixed up. Darn it. Okay. No, that's awesome. And then yeah. hotel speak, Thursday is a shoulder day. Yeah. Which means it's a dead day. And so this is a great thing to lift 
and yes. catapult into the weekend. Yes, it, it, and that is a good weekend. It's just we'll see how things roll a little later on some events we've mm -hmm. got planned. Can you leave me this time? Just let us know what we need to do. Okay, I will. Mm -hmm. Our next you concert too. is Fab Five, a Beatles tribute band. Actually, they corrected us. It is a 60s. <laughs> they want to include the Rolling Stones. Okay, well, they're dressed up. They're dressed up as the Beatles. <laughs> they look oh, just that'll like be confusing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and we are partnering again with the um, Tobacco Doches crew. This will be a lead into their weekend to get folks here early as part of their VIP package. They will be at the concert as well. So if we do have to work the, um, the folks within the city as far as street closures and this, I <laughs> worry about let's do it all at once. And then that way we can uh, maybe have a break on a couple weekends. But um, I like cramming the Friday, Saturdays. Sundays, too, if we have three-day weekend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. Anything else? That's it. Anybody have any questions for Ms. Temple? Thank you very much, Joanne. All right. Ashley. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our new members. Um, Joanne is still part of my report which I'm not surprised. She steals a lot of my things, <laughs> but it just means that I'm on her good side right now, so I'll take it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, so the Motorcycle Cannonball post uh, had a big splash. It's doing very well. Um, social media is always a toss-up. You never know what's going to really take off and then what's going to just, like, flop. So we're happy to see that, and um, we're continuing it. Um, got some scheduled posts coming up for it. Going to garner as much attraction for that so we can get 5,000 spectators like the other community did or more because we deserve it. Um, <laughs> I've mentioned to y'all that one of my goals is to increase Instagram followers. I'd really like to get 10 to 10,000 so that we can do the swipe up link thing and for other reasons, of course. Um, but we did get 250 new followers in July. So if I could just continue that trend, we'll be there in no time. So I'm really happy with our Instagram performance. Um, in July, we reached uh, 6,000 new accounts. So that was really cool. Um, I brought this ad with me. I realized, and we have new board members, but since I've been on this board, I haven't shown y'all any of the ads that I've done. Um, Hancock usually does our ads, and they're amazing, but every now and then I get the opportunity to do one for a smaller publication or for one that has um, approached us about a deal. And so um, I don't know if y'all have heard about the buzz, but our airport is um, going through some changes right now and getting some attraction with like the SFA aviation program and things like that. And so they will have a feature article in Business View magazine in September. It's going to be eight to 10 pages. And so they approached us about purchasing an ad. And so in support of the aviation program and SFA and the airport and also just to reach new people, we placed a half page ad, which I will show you. Ashley, can you just pass them down? Sure. Thank you. So yeah, I just wanted to show y'all that and let you kind of see my style and of course give me any feedback if you want to and things like that. Um, but I'm excited about this publication. It's not our typical uh, demographic. Usually our demographic is um, women <laughs> in, the, in their 40s to 50s, um, things like that. But this is uh, a, a slightly dem different demographic. It's the business executive groups. But um, as they start looking at our airport, um, I want them to see the, what else there is. I don't want them to just fly into the airport and not leave their post. So um, that was the goal with that. Um, other than that, uh, social media has been trending well with our What's Happening posts. Um, it's always funny to me because I only get feedback when I miss something. But I, that just means they're seeing it, so I'll take mm -hmm. it. <laughs> um, but I really appreciate the brewery's calendar on their website. It makes my job a million times easier. easier. <laughs> so that's really awesome. And then Chelsea's always really good about getting her dates to me as well. So. Oh, yeah. So, cool little thing. Um, I put a poster in uh, mo most of our hotels. Um, it's a 22 by 28 poster. There's one at the Fredonia Hotel, Hampton, Best Western, um, or maybe not Best Western. Yeah. My bad. 
well, yeah, Joanna puts them up for me because she's the one with the relationships with the hotels. But anyways, it's basically a monthly view of the events um, that are happening, and uh, it's always fun putting it together. But um, so we had it at Hampton Inn while they were having their ribbon cutting for their grand reopening. They did remodeling, and they had their execs there from, I don't even know where they're from. Oh, okay. I thought it was further than that. But anyways, from San Antonio, and they said that they had never seen something like that at hotels and that they wished their other hotels would do something like that to let their visitors know what's going on in the community. So um, that was nice praise for us, and it was cool to feel like we're a front runner in something. Um, but yeah, and, uh, and it's also inspiration to keep going because sometimes when I miss things, people get mad. Um, so it was, it was a really nice little feedback. That's great. Thanks. Good job. Any Thanks. questions for me? No, and this looks great. Oh, thank you so much. You know, thank y'all. So we also have posters up now um, you know, for travel in their, uh, in their lounge area when people drive in for servicing on their motor homes. Great. Party outside. Mm -hmm. At least they get to see you, Mike, and that's yeah. that's, that's that's always something. a treat. Yeah. <laughs> that's not nothing. That's not. Nice, but uh, yeah. all of our staff. Yeah. 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 We got the review. I hope y'all take it. We we got a really great review. We were just talking about the staff. I mean, we get good reviews often, but this one was really in depth. They even mentioned Joanna's dog, although not by the hmm? first name. <laughs> <laughs> fortunate enough this year to be a grant recipient from the junior forum um, for volunteers. So. That's fantastic. That's great. So we're going to yeah. get some new Be Like Mike shirts. We do. We do need to do a reboot. <laughs> <laughs> Again, thank you all for all you do. This is uh, it's, it's great to see um, that we're, we're coming out of the, the fog that was and, and, and have been, and, it, and, and it's just increasing and your synergy that you create with we're working together in this community is more impactful than I think you'll really know and I'm, I'm glad that it is recognized by um, by those uh, guests who visit our our community so thank you very much um, all right we have come to the end of our agenda so um, what we're going to do is we'll send out a uh, um, an email of our next designated time and, and, and date of meeting with the addition of the new board members and school starting back in. I, I think we need to look at how we do our meeting and when we do our meeting because uh, many of our, our um, board members are actively involved in their their careers uh, at 8.30 in the morning. So yeah. so we, we really need to, to look at that and evaluate what we do and we'll do that and perhaps send out. We'll send out a doodle poll. Yes, we'll send out a poll and uh, we'll do a little doodle and we'll see, <laughs> we'll see what happens there. So um, again, welcome new board members. Thank and, you. Uh, and I'm glad to have you and we're going to do great things for the community. So with that, I will call this meeting to adjournment.